The issue here isn't with this image. This image could walk. This image could potentially walk if the writer directs so with a particular kind of vision, a responsible vision is behind it. But it's Zack Snyder. And guys, let's be honest here. We all know what a Zack Snyder is. Let's get it. Can we just first start by saying this, that the Joker only walks with Batman. The Joker without Batman is irrelevant. I don't care what anyone says. Without Batman, the Joker is irrelevant. The Joker is not a great, a, a great character. In and of itself, is not a great character. Why was that Joker film so good by Todd Phillips with Joaquin Phoenix? It was so good because Todd Phillips realized that this character is extremely thin. But he's a popular character. How can I make a compelling film with Joaquin Phoenix just using the popularity of the character, which is what he did? Comic book fanboys were angry because they're like, oh my gosh, he's not like the normal Joker. Yes, because Todd Phillips was using you as a ruse because he wanted just to make a film with Joaquin Phoenix. And he knew that I need to just use the popularity of this guy as an end for you to see my film, which was a very good film and a spectacular performance. But the key thing about it was he didn't play the Joker in that film. He was the Joker for like five minutes. He was the guy trying to become the Joker, which was where the interest of the film lied. Hence why the film is finished. There is no sequel to that kind of film. Um, so, the Joker for me, I just think that they're far more interesting characters. Two Fist is more interesting. The Riddler is much more interesting. They're more interesting characters. And yes, Batman is way more interesting, way more psychological, and has far more depth than Joker. Joker is just fun and entertaining and larger than life, but only walks with Batman. Joker by himself, nah. No one wants to see that. That's just, it's stupid. It's too much, it's, it, it's, it's too much, it's too much madness. You have to have madness in moderation and up against somewhat sanity because Batman isn't really, Batman is actually insane, okay? <laughs> He's actually a psychopath that is only keeping it together. You see this image here? This image could be interesting. And it could walk with the right director. If you showed me this image and told me that the director is David Fincher or Alex Proyas or Nicholas Wending Refn or Dan Aronofsky, I'm like, Ooh, okay. Because I know that those guys are quality filmmakers and have a strong artistic eye and vision. So I will not be compelled as to, okay, this is radically different from the Joker that we know. But because I've seen their previous work, I'm interested to see what they want to put on the table. If the director of 300, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, is presenting this to me, <laughs> I have issues. Because when, in what Zack Snyder film has he pulled out a great performance? We all saw... Um, Morgan Freeman's performance in Seven. We saw Edward Norton's performance in Fight Club. We saw, um, oh, your boy himself, Jared Leto's performance in Requiem for a Dream. Um, Mickey Rock's performance in The in the Wrestler. Um, Ryan Gosling's performance in um, Drive. So, those directors have pulled out quality performance in their films. Please tell me the amazing acting performance Zack Snyder has pulled out from an actor in any of his films. Please tell me. Doomsday? That's PS2 CGI? So that's the issue here is when I look at this and I know the guy who's directing it, I'm like, I'm confused because I shudder to think what's going to go through. Because remember, this is the same man who picked a stick-thin non-actress as Wonder Woman. This is the same one who picked a cardboard cutout to be Superman. This is the same man that picked the no-talented acting chops as Batman. This is the same man that picked Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. This is the same man that gave us a PS1 stroke Mega Drive um 
doomsday. It's the same man. So for that to do, and I'm looking at this, how can I have any faith in this? How? For what reason? <laughs> you know? So um the and you see, and even <laughs> okay, no, look. Now, one thing is clear, because let's just bring this up. This was a mess. <laughs> David Ayer, you're mad. A guy, you, see, David Ayer, you're so cheesy, you're going to tattoo damage on your forehead? Are you, are you psycho? <laughs> you know, it's like, you see, and see, this, see, this issue when you have so many iterations. Jack Nicholson maxed out so much. Heath Ledger maxed out so much. Joaquin Phoenix maxed out so much that there is very few places to go. Even when you look at Joaquin Phoenix, Todd Phillips is doing that. There's no point in doing another Joker version. We are just doing a guy who, who just dresses up as a clown. So a guy who is just mad. A real man. So Joaquin Phoenix's Joker was the most realistic and the most believable. So we're not, we're not even doing the comic book Joker. We're just doing what if the Joker really existed for real. Because the... Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson Jokers are larger than life. They're not realistic. Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is real. <laughs> so, but this is a case of, oh my gosh, we have to do the Joker. He's so popular. We have to bank on the popularity and let us just try and be radically different. And then you now come up with this, which is where he tattoos it damaged. See, for Jared Leto, first thing with Jared Leto is that um, he's, a, he's annoying because of his whole, this guy was what's it called, mailing dead rats to the cast and um, used condoms and stuff. I'm like, mate, just act. Just act. You're not this, you're not Marlon Brando. You're not De Niro, you're not Pacino, you're not Gary Oldman, you're not Daniel D. D. Lewis, you're not Denzel Washington. Just act, mate. You don't need to be, oh, I'm into the method, I'm so into the character. Oh, shut up, I'm just, I'm just bloody act, all right, okay? You're a good actor, you ain't great. You're not, you know, you know, you're not sniffing Pacino, De Niro, De Lewis, Gary. You're not sniffing those those dudes. Okay, so just act. Don't be a freaking method merchant, man. Um. But but yeah, but this was stupid, in the way that he was represented specifically. That so it was it was stupid. But you see, these images, they look interesting. But the issue with these images is, the person. You see. Here's my thing here, and and you see, like I'm not a comic book fanboy. All right, I am an appreciator of the arts. I'm not a nerd or a comic book geek and everything. I just really love this stuff, and I don't need to be for, come on their label. But my thing about this stuff is that I'm a more of a film fan than a comic book fan. So if you bring me this cool comic book stuff, I I appreciate them, but do it properly because this is now the medium for film. Comic book is comic book. Film is film. And there are certain kinds of ways in which you should approach film. So, when I look at this, my thing is, when you see this image, you have to think, okay, what's, who's behind it? Who, who is orchestrating the image? The guy that's orchestrating the image is a dude called Zack Snyder. It's a dude called Zack Snyder. So, what great performance have we had from a dude called Zack Snyder? Because if we go back to um, the first image of Homeboy. Here we go. That was the one. You see, the first image of Homeboy. You see, well, this, well, this wasn't the first image, but this is one of the early images. Um, you see, when you saw this, I remember people were, were like, whoa, why does he have his lips like that? I remember fully when the first images of his came online, everybody was like, man, why does he look, look like this? Because he looks so radically different from what people expected of the Joker. But in my mind was Chris Nolan, Memento, Insomnia, Following. Prestige, Batman Begins. I know what he can do with the axe, and I know 
he's a filmmaker with a particular strong vision. Now, I have my issues with the Dark Knight and so forth, but we saw how the Joker turned out. But I was like, no, 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 no. So my main thing was about, oh, Heath Ledger, is he the right guy? But with regards to what it looked like, I was like, because I know who in the hands it is. I, I know who is in possession of this image. I know who will be controlling and directing this image. See, if I saw this and it was Zack Snyder, I'd be like, okay, I'm worried. <laughs> because Zack Snyder is not a serious filmmaker. He's not a, he's, the guy's a joker. Strong visuals and everything, but he's not a filmmaker to be taken seriously. He's not he's not here to do serious work that you can take properly in a proper mature manner. He's not that dude. He's not a serious guy. He's not a proper filmmaker. Okay? The guy's like a image visual trickster. So and you see, here's my thing about even when we when, when look at Jared Leto. Because Leto needs, needs to understand something very clear here. And this is just where it gets very real, you know. Um, after Ledger did what he did, cool off. And maybe this is what Warner Brothers should have done. But as an actor, you feel, feel if you want to go through. And I think this is why Leto went so deep into the character and wanted to do the whole method thing. Because he was like, oh man, I want to follow into this. This, this. I want to see the challenge of whether I can do what Ledger did, did, but what Ledger did was so extraordinary. <laughs> it was such a moment that chill, chill. Hence why, when we saw Homeboy with this, um, it made so much sense. Um, what's, what's, what, 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 what's it called? Oh no, see, when we saw this version, <laughs> Which, even when you look at it, it actually looks pretty creepy. Um, you see, when you rolled with this, this makes sense going here. It makes sense going here because when you now, this is so radically different, radically different from the Heath Ledger thing that you can't even compare. That's why you can't compare this version with Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson because what Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix were doing was, no, we're making a film. You see, Dark Knight is a comic book film. The Batman original, that's a comic book film. The Joker is a film. Based on a comic book, but it's a film. So this Joker here, it's a real guy. <laughs> Which is what made it scary. It's like, oh, no, no. This is somebody who you could potentially meet. So it felt much closer to home hence why it felt much scarier and much creepy and uneasy than what we saw from jack nicholson or Heath ledger so the thing is when we now go back to the jared leto thing jared leto for me i just felt you're trying too hard you're trying far too hard and look i gave him credit for because see Suicide Squad wasn't his fault. I remember watching Suicide Squad. Garbage film. Horrendous film. One of the worst I've ever seen. A stupid, stupid, stupid film. Very stupid film. But even after I watched it, I said, I don't blame Jed Leto for this. Because just as somebody who makes low, who made low-budget films and made amateur films and was in low-budget films and amateur films, I knew what the issue was. I'm like, these guys, they are cutting away from this dude. The editing around him. So his performance was not given any time to breathe. Because you can tell that, oh, this scene would have stretched out. It would be much longer. But because they brought in a music video person to recut the whole film, they turned it into a music video. And if you know anything about music videos, it's cut, 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 snappy, 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 snappy. Um, 3,000 frames each second. So that is impossible for you to see a performance. <laughs> If that is how you're cutting your film. Um, so, as I'm looking here right now, man, I'm like, for Leto, I know that he felt agree, like angry that he, he wouldn't be, be used or called back for the joke. Because I think, yeah, because when they were doing a Joker film, I think he felt like, oh, I, I, I feel sort of aggrieved that my Joker wouldn't go through. But Jared Leto, when you look at the end result, he's like, ah, yeah. Todd and Joaquin, you did that. 
but my worry with this is that first of all, I think there's Joker fatigue. There's, it's it's too much. It's too much. We've seen this character way too many times. There are other characters, hence why the best thing about this new Batman film that Matt Reeves actually this start give it. The best thing about this Matt Reeves film is thankfully no Joker. you thankfully we're now gonna get a real Riddler. Because we've never had that. We've never had like, a real interpretation of Riddler, which is a very because that's basically seven. It's it's basically John Doe. Riddler, Riddler done properly and realistically is basically John Doe, which wasn't what we had with with Jim Jim Carrey. Um, Two Face has not been done properly. A real proper story act that was seen in the long Halloween comic books of um, Harvey Dent to the Two Face character. We've not seen that act properly done. It was done class B brick like in Dark Knight. So there are other characters. Joker fatigue. I'm tired of this freaking dude, man. I'm tired of this dude. Okay. Heath Ledger did that. Jack Nicholson did that. Joaquin Phoenix did that. When you just see those three amazing performances, let the character rest. Come back in five years. Come back in seven years and just explore other avenues. But it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. And I think also blame the audience as well. Because it's the audience that push and push and push and push for it. So... <sighs> All that can be said is um do other characters. Um just don't do the Joker because all you're gonna do is you're just gonna just water down it. And let's just be real, Jared Leto. Do you really believe you're gonna come anything close to what Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, or Joaquin Phoenix did? You know you won't. So just go back to 30 seconds to Mars and just play your guitar and just play some freaking music, man. You know, and, and for Zack Snyder, <laughs> bro, release the film. I'll view your film and then we'll then re- we'll, we'll then review this this great Snyder cut, man. 